that our temporary home would be our camper. We don't have any heat in the camper. We don't have any running water. Our solar panels aren't working properly. The fridge isn't working properly. The lights aren't working properly. This is what it looks like. Hi friends, my name is Erin, and I'm telling the story of what life was like when I chased my dream of being a permaculture farmer. Hey, won't you stay a little bit longer? Sorry, didn't mean to, but I heard you cannot undo it. So please only two degrees this morning so this is one of the coldest mornings we've had yet this year so thankfully the furnace has decided to come on this morning I just have to wait for a little bit for it to warm up <laughs> we moved to the farm back in March but until I could build my tiny house we were living in my 11 and a half foot camper to put it simply it was not an easy life We've been living in the camper for six weeks now, and the first five weeks were really, really, really difficult. It was really, really cold. It snowed right up to two weeks ago, and we don't have any heat in the camper. We don't have any running water. Our solar panels aren't working properly. The fridge isn't working properly. The lights aren't working properly. So it's been an extreme challenge. And as the weather just stayed cold and wet and cold and wet, my mood really tanked. I was really struggling. Over time, I managed to get a lot of the camper systems working. The water pump worked, and I was able to drain my gray water tank into a hole behind the camper. But emptying the black water tank was not an option. So the toilet is out of commission because I am off grid here. The green bucket is for peeing and the black one is for pooing. Uh, and that's my laundry there. And all of that, as you can see, is in my shower. The shower is does not get used often because it's just too much of a pain in the ass. One of the perks of living in a camper where you can't use the flush toilet is we have an endless supply of nitrogen. We also have a special compost that's just for dumping people poo and cat poo. We use a compost toilet in the camper and we will use a compost toilet in the tiny house. And a compost toilet for us, it's not a fancy thousand dollar machine, it's a bucket with a seat on it that we put wood, wood shavings in or sawdust. Anyways, we ran out of sawdust very suddenly and unexpectedly last week. So after a bit of a scurry around to find a new source of sawdust, we found a local sawmill that sells buckets of sawdust. That is the small bucket of sawdust. I can't even imagine what the large bucket of sawdust looks like. So I'm gonna spend the next few days bagging that. Yeah. I just want to document that I reverse that trailer right up to the door. I did it. I'm so proud of myself. So the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I sweep the floor because while we're sleeping, the cats get litter absolutely everywhere throughout the entire camper. Sometimes even a little bit of poo. That's the first thing before the girls even get out of bed because I don't want them walking in it and tracking it all over the place. It's a lot easier than it was when I had five kittens. Yep, you heard that right. Remember the cat we found in the woods while we lived at my friend's? Well, she gave birth in the camper under the kitchen table in early spring. Okay, give her space, baby. Give her space. There it is. There's a kitten. <laughs> Why are their eyes open? Open to me. Open to me.
At eight weeks, the kittens went to their new homes. One kitten got to stay with us. One went to a friend's house and we get to see her regularly. And Emma got spayed so that I won't have to deal with a house full of kittens ever again. But even without four kittens, life in the camper kept me on my toes. My fridge still froze everything, even when it was turned off. So I finally gave up, unplugged it and used a cooler instead. And then I had more storage space. So after breakfast, I do the chores. When the weather was warmer, we did the chores first. But now I wait until it's slightly less freezing cold out before I go do the chores. The garden's finished. So we gave the garden to the chickens and the ducks and also the turkeys have come to live in the garden. Turkeys are super friendly. Hey girls. Hey Tom. Look out. Come on chickens. So after I do the feathered our feathered friends, I do the furry ones. 
So these three bunnies here are the young boys and they're enjoying the company of the turkeys and the rest of the rabbits are already in the barn for the winter. The two females and the babies, they just free range around on the floor. And the two males are in separate cages up top. Once the babies are old enough to breed, we're gonna have to separate them into boys and girls. Hello, how are you doing? So I've come in for lunch, I'm just having sandwiches. And of course, there is kitty litter all over the floor again. So sometimes, sometimes I sweep again. Sometimes I just leave and pretend I didn't see the mess. It really just depends on the, uh, on the day. Uh, today I will just leave and pretend I didn't see the mess. Cats are everywhere. Bugs are everywhere too. And the cats are entertained by hunting the bugs. So it kind of works. Uh, there's not really anything I can do to keep them out. They always find a way in. There's so many cracks and nooks and crannies in this place. Uh, around these little trap doors that go outside, bugs can fit in through there. We had about a week there where every day we were getting multiple wasps getting in the camper. And then of course all summer it was flies. Flies and maggots. Flies and maggots. Did you know that a fly egg hatches into a maggot the same day that it is laid? I didn't know that until I went to war with flies and maggots. And then I learned that I can't possibly win because they are more highly evolved than I am. Besides the animals, the garden was my biggest responsibility in the summer. It is supposed to drop down to two degrees tonight. So today is the day where I harvest everything and then give the garden to the chickens. I really wanted to record everything about the garden and how it did this year and how it looks so I can put it together with the stuff that I filmed in the spring. And then while I'm editing it, I will probably come up with a really good plan for next year. Or a clearer idea anyways. Uh, Laura has some ideas. She seems to have a pretty clear plan in her mind about what she wants. But since I'm the one who does the garden, I really want to have opinions rather than just kind of go, okay, whatever you want. Which is something that I like about working here is that I can just go, okay, whatever you want, or I can have an opinion and voice my opinion and we all talk it out like civilized adults. It's part of the reason I chose this farm, to be honest with you. Again, everything just did okay. It didn't do amazing, it did okay. But I sort of, I didn't really water very well and it was a very dry summer. And I didn't keep up on the weeding, as you can see. But I've never really bought into the idea that weeds are that big of a competitor. And then I thought maybe I could show you my straw bale row here. Some of them are still pretty pathetic. Again, this one was planted May 2 4 weekend, and that's it. It hasn't grown. Not even an inch it hasn't died. It hasn't grown. That's blossom and rot. Right. You're not filming that. You're not filming that? It's a reality of a garden. Blossom and rot. A reality of a garden that doesn't get enough water. This is it. What's it called, Abby? Why is it called a hornworm? Because it has a hole. Don't yeah. It? But is its horn dangerous? Nope. No. Wait, There's I want to touch it. I want to give it to the chickens. Yeah, you want to give it to I the chickens? This is the hornworm. Here, give it to Penguin. Buck, 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 buck. It's me. It's me. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Look out, Bethany. Off she goes! This was the most difficult garden I had ever worked. Of course, there were still some successes in the garden. That is a big kohlrabi. Cool 
So I planted a whole lot of German chamomile, but I don't know where. <laughs> and there's also wild chamomile growing here. This is the only plant that I am certain is German chamomile. So I've been harvesting my chamomile from this plant. And the cool thing is, is that it gives me more flowers about every two weeks. So this is about the fourth time that I've harvested from this plant. Which is neat to know that if you want to have a lot of chamomile, you don't need to plant a lot of plants. You just need to be willing to wait for it to flower again. We had some kale that made it through the winter and went to flower in the spring. So we let it go to seed. And when the seed started to dry out, we cut the plants down and put them in these big plastic bags and left them open in the greenhouse for a couple of weeks until they were all dry and crunchy. And now I am popping all the seed pods. Here you can see some here that are still good. You just squeeze them and they all pop open. And the seeds all fall to the bottom. See, look at all those seeds down there. So I've got them all down in this bottom corner of the bag. And then I'm just gonna rip that corner of the bag open. And they'll all come pouring out. A big part of what we wanna do here is produce plants that thrive in our particular microclimate. And yeah, we'll sell them as well, but they, I want stuff that does well in this garden, <laughs> in this garden, with this air and this sunlight and this soil. So everything that really thrives, we're going to save the seeds from and do again next year. And as someone who was visiting yesterday, my new seed saving buddy, <laughs> she told me that um, once you have three generations of a plant grown in your garden, it will be adapted to your microclimate which is very cool. Part of what's awesome about having such a hard year in the garden is that anything that did well this year is something I want to grow again. <laughs> this is Abby's baby that she saved from a crack in the sidewalk. It looks like it's a kohlrabi. I'll have to tell her that. She's been wondering. We'll have to cover it up before we let the chickens in protect her baby or she'll kill us has actually said that in exactly so many words that if we don't protect her baby when we let the chickens out she will kill me I'm not sure who's gonna wipe her bum once I'm dead but we'll find out are you able to walk through the garden and not eat tomatoes like if you have ripe tomatoes in your garden are you able to walk through the garden and not pick a tomato and eat it? Because I'm not, I can't, I'm completely incapable. Oh my God. <laughs> what are we having for dinner, Bethany? Uh, kohlrabi, purple cauliflower, beans, and maybe radishes. Yeah, and then what's this guy? And then what about these? Tomato, bull heart tomato. Yeah, cur de boo. And then these ones? A white paper? Yeah, so I'm gonna make a salad with the tomatoes and there's some basil around here somewhere. And we can use the beet leaves. You too short? Oh, shorty pants. I'll put it here. Shorty pants. Yeah, I have Go. And do you think it's gonna be yummy? The propane stove inside the camper did work, but it made the camper so hot that it was unbearable. So in the summer, we did 100% of our cooking on the barbecue. This is a very healthy dinner. It is, yeah. But what did we have for lunch today? Um, um, hot dogs? Yeah, hot dogs. <laughs> so we don't always eat like this, do we? Obviously, we did not have air conditioning in the camper. It is about 
39 degrees in the humidity tonight. We slept outside during one heat wave. Rainy days meant quiet activities. I have to do it now. And of course, big storms always left us feeling vulnerable. Times when living in a camper is a little bit frightening. <laughs> but on sunny days, we lived outside. So the end of tomato season always makes me really sad. But this year, inside of the greenhouse, all these tomatoes, they were all green when I brought them in a week ago. So they're starting to ripen already. So tomato sandwich season is not over. I'm pretty happy about that. The garden ready for the winter. We're putting down uh, cardboard boxes or paper bags covering it with the barn chicken rabbit manure and then putting a huge pile of chopped up leaves and hay on top and over the winter it will decompose just like a forest floor and we should have some pretty good rich soil on top of our clay and hopefully the garden will grow nicely <laughs> Fingers crossed. I meant to save seeds from these plants, from these fruits, but they're starting to go rotten and the cats keep knocking them on the floor and they explode rotten guts all over my camper. So instead, we are planting them out in the turtle. These leopards, leopard did you say? I'm a leopard, I'm, I'm, I'm a black panther. Oh, She's and a I'm a blue jay. You're a blue jay and a black panther. All right, are helping me plant Oh, I want to go to the island over here. Plant some fruit. We're just throwing the whole fruit into the grass. And maybe next year it'll grow. And maybe it won't. You're going to plant an okra? A pepper. You don't have to break it open or anything. Just stick the whole fruit up there. And it'll, it'll rot over the winter. And it'll provide its own food. Yeah. All right. We grew very close to Laura Jean and Garnet. They were mentors to me, teaching me everything they knew about permaculture, about nature, even about caring for a wood stove, which I would need to know in my tiny house. They embraced the girls like family, teaching and encouraging them, and giving them experiences that homeschoolers don't often get. Bus ride. They taught us about their heritage and included us in every aspect of their lives. They did what they could to help when I was struggling. When we didn't have electricity, they ran us a wire and they even gave us an old toaster. When I gave up on the fridge, they gave us one to use. We felt like family and we really grew to love them. <laughs> we grew to love the dogs too. There were often puppies to socialize. Laura always had a pack of dogs with her, and she taught us so much about how dogs learn. There was one downside, the constant barking. And at one point or another, each of us was bitten by a dog. Both of our cats were nearly murdered by the Jack Russells, and one of Laura's cats was killed by the dogs. So we had to keep our cats locked inside the camper at all times. The two big young dogs uh, chased my ducks and caught one and they plucked a whole bunch of her feathers out so she's got raw skin and they pulled a bit of her skin off so she's got a big gaping wound so she's in palliative care here but we did grow very fond of several of the dogs and pretty much everywhere we went there was at least one <laughs> dog with us we live outside we never have any screen time whatsoever. We're taking care of the chickens, we're taking care of the rabbits, we're taking care of the plants, we're prepping the garden. We're with the dogs, we're with our cat and her new kittens. So we're living exactly the life that I wanted us to be living.
life a little bit more fast paced than I'd like it to be. And we loved having adventures exploring this new corner of the world. You want me to come with you? Bethany, Bethany. You gotta stand beside her. <laughs> Hi. What's your name? Bethany. Hi, Bethany. And what's your favorite animal here at the petting zoo? Yay. The rabbits. Why is it the rabbits? Because eventually they will have baby rabbits. <laughs> got it. Got it, got it. And how about you? What's your name? Abby. Hi, Abby. What's your favorite animal here at the petting zoo? I forget what they're called. Pigeons. Pigeons. She forgets what they're called. What are they? Pigeons. The pigeons. Why do you like the pigeons? Because I've never seen them before. Wow. A new animal. Yeah. Down here. Wow. Okay. 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 Okay.
really complicated. I was homeschooling my kids. I was caring for the garden. I was mentoring on the farm. I was launching a new business. I was designing and building a tiny house. It was absolutely a beautiful life, but it was a lot of work. <laughs> because the truth is, even though this is hard and I'm exhausted and I'm full of doubt, I know that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And to have that kind of confidence about my life is a game changer. In the next episode. And I'm so burnt out. I am completely burnt out, but the clock is ticking to have the house to a place where we could live in it before the snow arrived. I'm so glad you decided to join me on this adventure. I'll see you next time. So it's kind of a train wreck. I'm really irritated. My mood is pretty low. I'm definitely really tired of living in a camper. I don't know if I'm doing this right. It's honestly the best I can do. I'm not strong enough and there's only one of me. Anthony, how did you do it before? I just chased you in there. All right, let's do that then. I got him. The girls are all like, what's going on? What's going on?